Formal verification is the highest tier of assurance when it comes to testing smart contracts and verifying that they follow the intended behavior that's specified. Unlike unit tests or even fuzzing tests, formal verification literally proves the particular invariance that you specify to hold under every single possible circumstance beyond a shadow of a doubt. So what exactly does that mean? How does formal verification work? And how can you start formally verifying contracts today? These are all questions we're gonna answer today and more. But of course, before we get into that, my name is Owen and over a year and a half ago, I founded Guardian Audits and ever since then, we've uncovered dozens and dozens of critical and high vulnerabilities. And my goal with every single one of these videos, and especially this one, is to distill down everything I've learned along the way and give it to you so that you can ultimately become a much, much better blockchain engineer or Web3 security auditor. So without further ado, let's get right into formal verification. Okay, fantastic. So we briefly, very briefly talked about what formal verification actually is, and you might have already heard about it, but let's go and dive in and really understand at a deep level what formal verification is and how it works under the hood. So the first thing we need to understand is that formal verification functions based off of Boolean formulas. Your smart contract code is essentially translated into Boolean formulas that have a bunch of Boolean conditions with specific variables being anded and ORed and all of the conditions being anded or ORed together in order to finally come up with something that is interpretable by a SMT solver. So the solver is then able to check the equation and see if the equation is satisfiable. When the equation is satisfiable, we're basically just saying, is there some combination of all of the input variables that exists that makes this resulting Boolean formula actually return true? So let's have a look at exactly what I mean by this. So let's say that we had a function of three different variables. We could say it is f of x, y, and z. And the first condition here can be x is greater than y. And then we can use this and operator like that. And that will basically and together with the next condition here, which will be y is greater than z. And then we can and that with a final condition, which is of course x greater than z. So this is just an arbitrary Boolean formula that I've just sort of made up here. And so satisfiability in this context basically means, can I find some combination of x, y, and z, x, y, and z here that are going to satisfy this set of formulas, right, as an aggregate result here. So try and think of some combination of x, y, and z that is actually going to yield true for, for this resulting formula here. So yeah, there are many, many solutions, one of which is, of course, x equals 2, y equals 1, and z equals 0. That is a possible solution here, right? If we have two greater than one, that's true. And that with one is greater than zero, that is of course true. And that together with two is greater than zero, this is also true. And so true and true and true. So this formula here, this function of X, Y, and Z is satisfiable. It can be satisfied with some combination of inputs and we just need one particular combination of inputs to actually satisfy this equation. So let's see how what I just talked about actually translates to a real smart contract though. So here we can see the exact formula we just looked at here laid out in a smart contract, right? So here we have an assertion of X is greater than Y. We have an assertion of Y is greater than Z an assertion of X is greater than Z. So we can easily see here that each assertion statement here adds a condition, an individual condition here to the formula. And then of course, if I have multiple asserts in parallel like this, then of course they are you know, equivalent to them being anded together, right? If we're going to formally verify this contract here, then it's going to pass all of these asserts. So this must be verified 
and this must be verified and this must be verified for the whole system to be formally verified. Okay, so we want to get these assert statements formally verified and see if this formula actually holds, right? So how are we going to do that? There's actually a number of ways that we could possibly go about attempting to formally verify this contract. We could write a full specification of what we're trying to prove here in the language K, which is designed for SMT solving. And then we could use the KEVM repository to prove that specification for a particular smart contract. Or we could translate our smart contract into SMT lib, which is a language that's intended to be used by SMT solvers. And then we could feed that translation to Z3, which will ultimately take in that SMT lib and basically run a prover on it and see if it's actually satisfiable or provable. Or we could go for the easiest option here, which is to use the SMT checker, which is built into Solidity itself. Under the hood, the SMT checker will essentially convert our contract into SMT lib for us and then feed it to Z3 all under the hood. So let's go ahead and run the SMT checker on this contract. So here's how we can run the SMT checker using Solsi and just as a side note, you might end up having to build Solsi yourself and you could find instructions to do that on the Solidity docs. Depending on what your setup is and uh, what platform you're actually running on, you might have to go ahead and manually build Solsi to actually be able to get the SMT checker to work here. So here you can see we're specifying a model checker engine here. This is essentially an engine that is going to be used during the proving process. We're not gonna to get too in depth here on that. And then you can see we are also specifying over here the solvers. We are using Z3 as a solver during this verification. And then you can see we, we are able to specify the targets. So right here, we are specifying the assertion targets. So right here, we're gonna be validating the asserts that we've placed. And there are other targets that we'll take a look at in just a second. So we're running this for our smart contract file. Okay, so great. When we run our SMT checker on the contract, we should be able to see that it gets verified, right? Because our Boolean formula is satisfiable. But no, actually it is not formally verifiable and it actually disproves our assertions and it gives us some examples here so for each assert it invalidated all three of them with one single example of x equals to zero y equals to zero and z equals to zero well that's obvious right if we look at all of these asserts then they actually don't hold true for a lot of values right the reason this wasn't able to get verified is because the smt checker actually checks for unsatisfiability of the negation of the Boolean formula. What does this mean as a, at a formula level? Essentially, we basically go not right here, and then we end up with the inverse of this formula, which is as follows. We have x is less than or equal to y as the first condition, and then now it is ORed, so we flip AND into an OR, and then we go y is less than or equal to z and then we or that with the final clause here which is x is less than or equal to z and so this is the negation of our formula up here and what the smt checker does is it says well is this formula here is this satisfiable if i can satisfy the negation of f then I know that F cannot hold under all inputs. And of course we can see, for example, I only need to look at one particular condition here, X less than or equal to Y. Well, obviously I can provide a Y of zero and an X of 10, and this condition doesn't even hold right there. And since all of these are ORed, then obviously the negation of F is satisfiable, which means that F is not 
formally verifiable. And this makes sense, right? If I can never satisfy the negation of a formula, then that original formula must always hold true, no matter what the inputs are. So what can we do to make this invariant hold, right? What can we do to have all of these asserts actually pass? Well, what we can do is we can actually limit the scope of inputs with some require statements. So if we could add two require statements that basically allow us to formally verify that this is actually satisfiable, if we constrict the input values of X, Y, and Z, what two requires would you add? Okay, so one possible solution here is to add Y is less than X and then Z is less than Y. And then now if we come and if we run the SMT checker here, we can see that the, the three verification conditions, our three assertions here, were proved safe. So we actually just formally verified all of these assert statements to hold true under literally every X, Y, and Z possible input that satisfied these two require statements here. Okay, so let's have a look at another contract here. So we have two functions here. We have function H, which takes in X and just verifies that it's not going to overflow when we multiply it by two for the UN256. And then we have a function F here, which actually could potentially overflow if you gave it a number that was within five of the max UN256 and it just returns X plus five. So now the verification here is going to be that H of X is always greater than or equal to F of X. So before we go and formally verify this, can you tell me, is this gonna be verified without adding anything or is there something we need to add and what do you think needs to be added if so? Okay, great, so we can run the SMT checker for our second contract here and we will see that it is not formally verifiable right off the bat. And in fact, the counterexample that it gives us is x equals zero. So of course, if x equals zero and we go h of zero, then two times zero is zero, but f of zero will give us five. And so of course, zero is not greater than or equal to five. So one require statement we can add here is just simply to require that x is greater than four. And then now if we go and we run the same SMT checker on this contract, then we can see that we have proved this invariant to be safe. And so you can see as systems start to get more and more complex, this can be increasingly powerful as we have, you know, even more math heavy functions that do a lot of computations and different things that are hard to mentally prove out. You can use the SMT checker to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that invariants such as this actually hold in the code. And this is actually the key to really chasing out some very, very hard to uncover via manual analysis bugs and vulnerabilities and stuff like this by actually using the power of satisfiability theory to go and check all of these different assertions. But it's not only assertions that the SMT checker can be useful for. I mentioned earlier that there are some other flags that can be used with the SMT checker and we'll actually look at one now. So of course I can specify a target of overflow and then I can see that in this contract is actually an instance of a potential overflow like we said, right? With this function F, it is not protected against potential overflow if we were to be passed a, a number that was for example, you know, within five of the max uint. So we can see that this is only four less than the maximum uh, uint 256 value. And so actually what happens is when we add five to this, it actually goes and rolls around to zero. Or in the case of solidity eight and up, we, we have basically a revert. And then we can even come and look at a, a third example here. We can see, you know, maybe this is something like a vault system. Okay, so we have this subtraction here. Is it going to be safe to add unchecked here to uh, when we're doing the subtraction to save a little bit of gas or something like this? Or, you know, is there anything else that we need to worry about? We can actually come and set the, the flags here to 
all. And we'll see what all of the flags here are in a second. So if we run all the flags here and we update it to this third example, we can see that there is one instance of overflow in this case. So on this balances plus equals amount, this could potentially overflow, although if you're using any reasonable token, it's extremely unlikely. But of course, it didn't flag anything here. So of course, if we wanted to, we could add a unchecked block and perhaps save a little bit of gas around this subtraction here. And we have formally verified that this use of unchecked is actually safe. And so if we look at the help for Solsi, then we can actually see all of the different targets here that can be used. So we can see we have stuff like underflow checks, overflow checks, division by zero, balance assertions, pop empty array, out of bounds, all sorts of very useful things, useful edge cases that you'll want to be able to check to and be able to know exactly when they can come up because they could potentially be used to yield some sort of critical vulnerability. And of course, this is a fantastic way to build up potential knobs that you can use to construct more complex attacks. If I'm, for instance, able to uncover that there's a very rare edge case that actually leads to a division by zero case, potentially in a complex system that could be leveraged for a complex attack. So now we've got a great feel for how the SMT checker works, what it does, and exactly how powerful it is and how we might even be able to use it in the future. But of course, it's good to keep in mind that the SMT checker has its limits, of course. Some pieces of code will actually be too computationally hard for the SMT checker to prove. In these cases, it might actually be necessary to sort of modify the assert statements and add in or modify the require statements in order to limit the amount of computation necessary to carry out the formal verification. Okay, and that is everything that you need to know from a high level of formal verification. I really hope this one was helpful and I hope you learned something new and hopefully you'll actually go and try to start formally verifying stuff and getting your hands dirty on the SMT checker itself. It's a really, really powerful tool and I promise that you'll be glad that you pushed yourself to go ahead and use it. And of course, if you are building a really cool DeFi protocol or you're on the team of a, a really great DeFi app and you're coming up on launch and you're starting to think about security audits and security reviews and how you're going to secure your application when you launch, then get a free first pass security review of just any initial notes from a security researcher on exactly the types of things to consider as attack vectors, things you might want to fix, and areas of the code base that would be especially useful to dive into. Get all of that for free when you go to guardianaudits.com slash quote and apply to get a quote for a smart contract audit. And of course, if you know any teams who are looking to launch and looking for a security audit, then send them to guardianaudits.com slash quote. Of course, if you're looking for a community to grow your Solidity security skills and connect with others who are really passionate about Solidity security and even get the opportunity to team up with others and participate in team audits and even get rewarded for the findings that you uncover as a team, then go to lab.guardianaudits.com and fill out an application to join us. All right. Fantastic. That is everything for this time. I can't wait to see you in the next one.